Hey guys, it's Jess and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about centering. So it's something that everyone at some point struggles with getting right, but of course if you can't get that right, everything else dominoes after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to walk through everything that I know about centering clay and I'll put timestamps in the description so you can just jump to the parts that interest you or maybe that you're struggling with. So the very first thing that I wanted to talk about in centering is posture. And clay posture is much different than like ballerina posture. So normally when I say this in a class that everybody needs to watch their posture, immediately everyone straightens their back and sits up really nice and tall and straight. And even though your chiropractor might love that or your yoga instructor in clay, it's a lot more hunched over. And the reason for that is if you are out here, you're going to be unanchored anywhere. If you are leaning forward, you're going to be able to actually leverage your own body weight so it won't be all hands and all arms. You'll be able to really use your shoulders and your posture to help you get that clay centered. And you'll also end up being down and grounded and if you're still the clay will be still so basically the entire goal of centering is to find a good position for your particular body and body type that will help you stay steady and stable and there are some differences if you're working with a small piece of clay or a big piece of clay so today we're just going to talk about most pieces of clay like right in the middle somewhere between a pound and probably four pounds this is how you'd center it I'll do a piece later on centering larger pieces of clay because it is a little bit different but for now let's stick with this so the very first thing to think about after you're addressing your posture so my legs are touching the splash pan I'm up as far as I can be and when I lean over I want my elbows to be resting on my legs or the splash pan whichever feels more comfortable and if I were looking down, I want the center of the wheel to be lined up with my chest. If I were to drop my hands, my hands naturally fall to the center of the wheel. If you're leaning over and you're finding that your hands are all the way back here, you're not using your anatomy to your best advantage. So maybe just find that spot, what that looks like. And that's also going to include putting the pedal where you can easily accelerate and decelerate without shifting your whole body. So I'm just gonna do that and make sure that pedal is in a really good position for me. And now clay. So your clay and how hard it is, meaning how much water content it has, will have a big impact on how easy it is to center up. So I like to work with really, really soft clay and you don't really get a metal or a gold star if you're really working and get a big tough piece of clay so you might as well make it as easy on your joints and your hands as possible so when i say soft i'm gonna just show you when i push in it's really easy to leave indentations i can smush this really easily so if that gives you an idea of the water content of this and if you're working with clay and it is just fighting you and fighting you and fighting you add some water and soften it up and the way you would do that is you would open your bag of clay, take a wood knife, poke really, really deep holes down into the actual bag of clay, like the cube of clay, fill those holes with water, tie up your bag and set it aside for a few days. Now you will have to wedge it really, really well to make sure that water is evenly distributed, but it will make your life so much easier. <laughs> and unless you're making like a 25 pound sink or a really wide bowl or something, you don't really need the strength and structure of a drier clay. So wet clay, make it easy on yourself. The other thing is after you make your ball of clay and you want that to be just as round as it possibly can, look for any cracks or folds that might be in the clay. And the reason for this is if you got a deep crack and you set it down on the wheel head, it's not a big chance, but there is a small chance you might be building an S crack or just a crack that looks like an S into the bottom of your pot after it gets fired, it's a weak point. So if you find that you have one of those, point it up, and then when you go to put your clay on the wheel, instead of gently sort of laying it down, go ahead and give it a thwack. And I did a horrible job <laughs> and it's way off center, no big deal. I can just scooch it back and get it nice and on center. And I'm just gonna use 
this part of my hand and press a little bit in and downward on the clay to seal it up. And you can do this, and I usually do with the wheel moving, but that sound of slapping is kind of annoying. <laughs> I wanted to spare you. So I'm just using this part of my hand to pat around the edge until the shape that I'm left with is like a hamburger bun or portobello mushroom cap for vegetarians out there. And you can also take your finger with a little bit of water and just run it along the edge and it will seal down pretty well. And this is a pretty good tip if you're finding especially that water is getting under your clay and your clay is just sliding off at some point. Um, usually that's from putting the clay on the wheel with wet hands or having the wheel head wet. But it can also be that you've left a little gap and haven't really adhered the clay very well to the wheel. So by sealing it, that will help you out a little bit. Now, I want to get into the hand positions, and to do that, I'm going to switch to my fancy like crane um, tripod. So I'll be back in one second, and we'll just cue in on what my hands are doing when I'm centering. Okay, y'all, so we are back with a bird's eye view of centering, and I actually wanted to show you the process of putting the ball on the wheel. Um, I know it seems like such a small detail, but it's actually kind of important, so I wanted to walk you through that. And so this is a ball of clay. <laughs> of course, it's a ball of clay. Um, and I just wanted to show you what I was talking about earlier, and I don't know if you can see, but most of this ball is fine. It has some divots because it's soft, but this right here, this was one of those cracks or folds I was telling you about, and I don't want to put that facing down because I don't want to accidentally put a crack in the bottom of my pot. So I'm going to leave that facing up, and I'm just going to thwack it, and again, <laughs> apparently I am not very good at getting this on center, so I'm just going to take my hands and scooch it and use the rings to line it up and go ahead and start my wheel pretty full speed. And again, with this part of my thumb, so this meaty part, I'm just going to tap in and down. And what I'm looking for overall is a rounded shape on top. And a lot of times I see beginners especially smacking it down like this and creating a flat topped pancake shape. And that's not really what you want. You want something that really is adhered to the wheel, but nice and domed. And then that trick from earlier, if you wanted to see it from above, I'm just gonna wet my finger. And by running it along the edge, I don't know if you can tell, but it's creating this little, seal and already getting me started with these vertical edges and it is going to take a little bit off just because I had a rounded shape. Okay, so centering from above. First thing is I want to get my wheel going full speed before I even add water. Then I'm going to add my water pretty evenly. I'm going to make sure I'm scooted up as far as I can with my thighs touching the splash pan and then building the position from my elbow, my right elbow is going into my thigh and I'm dropping my hand down so that when I look down, my hand looks like kind of like a karate chop. So once I have that in place, I wanna curl my fingers around the clay. And in order to lock these fingers in place, I'm gonna drop my thumb right on top of where these knuckles are. And I just wanna show you the shape. So this is the shape that we're going for. And the function of the right hand is really the power and it's also the shape. So whatever you have going on here will really affect the quality of your centering. If you have your hand like this, and I don't know if you can tell, but there's a gap of space right here. Basically, as soon as you try to apply pressure, it's only gonna apply pressure where you're touching. And for me, that's just here. And that doesn't have as much control as I'd like it to have because there's just not much contact between my hand and the clay. So by wrapping my hand all the way around, all of a sudden I have contact all the way around. I'm surrounding the clay with this hand. So I'm gonna have a much better result. So one more time, my elbow is planted on top of my leg of the splash pan. I'm gonna drop my hand down into a karate chop, curl my fingers around into a hard rainbow and lock my thumb. And once I have that going, the next step is to actually apply some force to the clay. And the direction of that force is I'm going to be pulling this hand almost like I'm pulling towards my belly button. So if I am actually applying enough force, I don't know if you can tell, but I should almost be able to center this clay up just from the force of this hand. 
So the hand isn't just sitting there sort of riding along the clay. If it were, let me show you. If it were, this is what it would look like. So if you look down at your hands and this is what you're seeing, it means you're not engaging your hand and you're not pulling that dominant hand, that right hand back towards your belly button. As soon as I do that, you can see my hand really isn't going anywhere and you can start to see the muscles in my forearm and in my bicep are gonna start flexing. Okay, so if you have applied enough pressure with that right hand, what should you see? Okay, we should start to see that the clay is getting on center and the second thing you should see is that the sides right here are starting to get straight. They're starting to get square. So that's how you know that your right hand is doing its job. So once you have that in place, you can add the left hand. And the left hand is kind of the same thing. I want to start in the same place by planting my elbow against my thigh, drop my hand down again like a karate chop, and then overlap my left over my right. And this is super duper duper important. So the reason I like to overlap my hands is it gives me not only double strength, but double control. So if my hands aren't joined, they can kind of be doing different things at the same time. When they're locked together, they're a unit and they're really enveloping the clay and controlling the shape of the clay. So we will really quickly go through again what everything looks like. And if at any point you're starting to notice a buildup of clay on the wheel, go ahead and wet your sponge, squeeze it out pretty much all the way because we don't want to add water to the wheel and clean up next to your wheel head clean up the sides of your hands and even scrape your hands on the bucket and that's going to help you get a nicer cleaner result in your end piece even all the way at the beginning here with centering. Okay so elbow karate chop fingers around thumb locked in pulling in this direction my left hand is also a karate chop wrapping around and now with this part of my hand I need to counter the force and so because I'm pulling this way with this hand, I need to meet force with my left hand. So they're pulling like, they're pushing and pulling like this. So if that's all I do, and I just push with this part of my hand and pull with this part of my hand, this clay is just gonna rise up like that, really, really tall. And this is a shape that would be pretty difficult to work with unless you were throwing off the hump or something. So. We know we have the power coming from this side and this side, and we know we have it surrounded on this side and this side. The wheel takes care of the bottom. So the only place that we're not containing the clay and applying force is from above. So that's the next thing we need to figure out is how to apply some strength to contain that clay from above. So we have our right hand or dominant hand in place, our left hand karate chopped, overlapping and pushing in. Now we're gonna use this part of our thumb to push in and down. And so it's really important to note that I'm not pushing straight down and I'm not coming in from the side. I'm coming in very much at like a 45 degree angle and I'm pushing right here on the clay, this part of the surface. So it hits from about the place where the sides stop being straight all the way to the point. And if you're part of that thumb is in the right position, you'll see your clay starting to take on almost like a Hershey kiss shape. Not quite that dramatic, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And I'm just gonna release slowly. So if my right hand is doing its job, these sides are really straight. If my left hand is doing its job, it's not off center because the force that I've applied this way, I've met this way, which just means if I'm pulling towards me with a level five amount of force, I want to push and meet that force with the same. And then this slight slope right here means that my thumb is at the right angle. So that's a good way to check if that's going on. So one of the things that I love about clay is that you can just look at the shape of what you're creating and get a lot of information. So the first thing I like to look at when I look at a piece of clay to see if it's centered is, are the sides straight? So if the sides aren't straight, a couple of things could be going on. The first is if instead of having your hands vertical, you start to angle your hands a little bit, you're going to get this mountainy, slopey shape. 
where instead of a crisp edge, we're sort of just spilling out, and it could even get even wider than this, but you'll end up with a really wide shape. It's hard to keep that centered, and there's no real defined edges, and if there is, it's only really, really short. It's not very tall. So the most common reason for this is that it kind of hurts the side of your hands, especially when you're beginning. So if you have your hands really vertical and really pressing against the wheel, you're gonna get those nice vertical sides. But if it's starting to rub and to burn, you're gonna lift your hands slightly off the wheel and that'll leave this skirt of clay. And that's the first indication that that might be the problem. And if you are leaving that skirt of clay, just take your sponge, clean up right next to the clay, and clean the sides of your hands. Because if you leave that grit on your hands, it's just gonna keep rubbing and burning. So that's the first indication. The second thing is, if it's rubbing against your hands, chances are your pinkies are gonna start flying away just because it hurts to make contact against the grit. And I don't know if you can see, but instead of staying vertical, the second I lift my pinkies, my hands sort of rotate in. And what happens then is that the force, instead of being inward like this, gets transferred and all of a sudden I'm pushing down. And if I push down, again, I'm left with that sort of slopey shape. Okay, so to recap, if your hands aren't vertical, but those pinkies are kind of flying away, you'll get that slopey mountain shape. If your hands maybe are vertical, but you're not quite down at the wheel head, you're gonna get this little, let's see if I can do it again, we'll get this little skirt of clay where it smears right next to the wheel head. And again, that's gonna be really, really difficult to get that clay centered. All right, so another common thing that I see is the opposite problem actually is overcompensating. So a lot of times you will have this skirt of clay or this slope and you'll think, okay, okay, I need to really press my hands into the wheel. I need to really get that clay. And so then you'll end up cupping the clay and you'll really dig in with your pinkies. You'll really dig in with your fingers. And let me see if I can show you what that looks like. So usually the shape that indicates that that's what's going on is we have a really rounded shape. And I don't know if you can tell from the overhead view, but if I trace my fingers along, you'll be able to see it cuts under here. So all the way around here is a trench where my fingers dug in. And so that's what sort of overcompensating for that pinky thing is. I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit. It's basically this motion. So if you have a, a trench digging in under your clay, most likely you're cupping your clay like this. If you have a mountain or a little skirt of clay, most likely you're lifting your hands off the wheel or your pinkies are coming off the wheel because it's, it's getting a little raw and chapped. And you'll just be able to tell by the slope and the skirt. So another really good check-in for you to see if you are applying the right kind of force and if your hands are actually on the wheel is to look at the slip and where it's distributed. So the slip is all of this stuff. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a really hard line of slip where my hands have pushed it away. And my the sides of my hands are pressed so tight against the wheel that it reveals the metal and it's a little bit cleaner here. So that's really good feedback for you if you're actually pressing in. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is when your clay gets centered and then uncentered. So I have a lot of students, or I've had a lot of students in the past who get to this point and it's perfect and they should slowly release, but they keep going and they keep holding. And what happens is the clay is gonna start to get, get dry. And when the clay gets dry, it gets sticky. And when the clay gets sticky, it starts sticking to your hands. And instead of going really smoothly through your palms, it's gonna adhere to your palm and start twisting. And really soon here, it's gonna start burning and I have to let go. But I don't know if you can tell, that perfectly centered piece of clay is now off-centered just because I continued to hold it way past when it was actually centered. You do need to slowly release, that is important, but you also need to release. <laughs> so once you have your clay, this is about how long it should take to release. So I'm starting to release now. And it takes a while. You know, I definitely am releasing slowly and with control. And what I try to do is release outward 
So if I release upward or I release one hand first, it's gonna create problems. So I just try to think about my fingers almost blossoming like a flower outward, and that should keep this centered. Another thing that can throw your centering off is your wheel speed. So it's pretty common that when you concentrate, you're either gonna slow your wheel down or speed it up. And it's just kind of a personality thing. Some people really, really lean in and dig in when they're concentrating and some people end up going really slow. And both of those things are gonna cause problems. You need to maintain a pretty consistent speed and I will show you why. So if you are centering at this speed and you start releasing, but you also slow the wheel, I'm still making contact with the clay and the wheel is stopped, which means there's no way that I can evenly release the pressure on the clay. I need the help of the wheel spinning. So you need to make sure that if you are at this speed, you release at the same speed. Don't lean forward to concentrate, and then when you start to release, stop your wheel. It's the same as letting go too quickly. And the other thing to keep in mind is if you're one of those people that when you concentrate, you happen to slow down your wheel, it's gonna make your life a lot tougher than it needs to be. And the reason is, in order to get the clay centered, you have to stay absolutely still through one revolution of the wheel. If the clay is going really slow, I have to stay without moving out of position that long. If the clay is going really fast, that time is shortened and there's a little bit more leeway. So let the spinning of the wheel and the speed of the wheel do some of the work for you. And as you continue through the throwing process, you are gonna be slowing your wheel down, but for this part and for trimming, haul the wheel, go really, really fast. Another question I get a lot is, well, how do I even know if my clay is centered? And that's an excellent question. You can't tell if the wheel isn't spinning. Um, it's something that will help you out a lot later on if you make a bowl or a plate or a cup or something that's kind of funky, unless you're gonna be displaying it on some sort of turning pedestal in your house, you won't ever be able to tell. So the first thing you need to do is spin your wheel to check and see if it's centered. Normally, you can just tell by its relationship to the rings but if that's looking a little hard you can just make your hand into like a little claw and lightly touch the perimeter of the clay if it runs smoothly and touches all the points of your fingers at the same time it's centered if it bumps and hits one finger disproportionate to the other then you know it's not centered and I'll show you the difference so this is running smoothly in my fingers my fingers aren't bouncing around they're staying totally still if this were a little off center I don't know if you can see the difference do you see my hand is moving and I can also just feel it especially if I hold my finger still it's gonna bounce and touch different parts of my fingers at a time. If I lightly touch the clay, I can even just watch my hand sort of rotating in a lopsided way. So that's a really good way to just check in with yourself and see if your clay is centered. Okay, so even though it seems kind of obnoxious, if you're having trouble centering, just keep knocking your piece off center and recentering it over and over and over. And before you know it, you're gonna have it in muscle memory and it won't be such a big deal. If you find that it's taking you longer than maybe 10 seconds to center up a piece of clay, you know, check and make sure that it has enough of a water content. And if it does, just keep practicing centering. Um, it's a little torturous while you're learning, but it's going to really help level up your skills overall. Okay, so now I want to put it all together for you and we can walk through it all really quickly as a review just so you can see it all at once. So first I'm going to really mess this up, make it hard to work with. All right, so my wheel is spinning. I'm really up close and making contact with the splash pan all along my legs. With the wheel spinning at full out flat speed, I'm going to add water building my centering position from my elbows on my right hand i'm planting the elbows and then dropping my right hand down into a karate chop i'm curling my fingers all the way around that ball of clay into a really hard rainbow shape putting my thumb down double checking to make sure that my forearms are resting on the splash pan i'm going to pull in this direction towards my belly button 
Then I'm going to drop my left hand, also making sure my elbow's planted along my thigh. Overlap my hands, push in, drop that meaty part of the chicken drumstick and push down and then do everything I can to stay still. And as soon as I have that, I'm gonna to try to release slowly. So I actually didn't get quite to the wheel head. So I'm gonna clean that up. And a good way to do that and get really vertical edges and clean up your wheel is to put your finger inside your throwing sponge and fold the sponge around your finger almost like a hot dog and then use that as a vertical edge and that's really going to help you prepare for the next stage of your throwing. I'm going to get my hands wet again and clean them off and sometimes if you have really messy hands it will transfer to the wheel so try to keep them pretty clean she says with totally messy hands. <laughs> And if you're having trouble with this, this part of your thumb, think about just using this part and reaching your thumb towards your other hand. A lot of times I see people just not know what to do with this thumb and they think that they need to use the actual thumb. But I'm gonna show you what happens if you try to use your actual thumb. You're gonna do some weird thing where you're gonna either create a little unicorn horn or rip a piece of clay off between your thumb and your pointer finger. And if that's happening to you, if you're getting these plugs of clay or these ribbons of clay just coming off, what's happening most likely is the tip of your thumb is gouging in some way or you're using this part of your thumb. Remember, it's only this part of my thumb that I'm pushing in and down with. So look at the difference. So when I'm just using that fleshy part of my thumb, I completely can wiggle my thumb and it's no big deal. If I'm trying to use my thumb, then it's probably gonna look something like this and be shearing off some clay. So that's another thing to be on the lookout for. Another thing I wanted to review is that you can be in the perfect centering position and not get centered. And I wanna show you why. So I'm gonna knock this poor clay <laughs> that's been used for like the past 40 minutes off center until it's good and off center. And then I'm gonna put my hands in the exact position we talked about. So if I am not down and grounded and applying any strength to centering, this is what it's gonna look like. And it's never gonna get any closer to being centered. Think of your entire body as a mold for the clay to fill. So your job is to find a position where you can be totally still. And if you're able to hold totally still and keep the clay wet and release slowly, it's going to get centered. So here's the difference. I'm in the correct position, but there's absolutely no strength or pressure being applied. And now I'm going to flex my forearms and my biceps. I'm going to pull this towards me and push away at the same time and just see if you can see the difference. So again, here's correct position, but no pressure, pressure, and we're already centered up. So it really makes a huge difference. And if you're struggling with centering, you know, take a look at all these different ways to self-diagnose what might be going on. Look for the skirt, look for the slope, look for the undercut, the ribbons of clay, or when you're looking down at your hands, are your hands just moving around like this? And those should be pretty good indicators to you of what parts of the process need to be looked at a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the other view and we can do a quick review of everything from a different angle just so you can see it one more time in one more way and then we will be wrapped up with centering. All right guys, so that's basically everything that I know about centering. Normal like one to four pound size pieces. Uh, just a quick review, make sure your posture is where it needs to be and by that up to the splash pan elbows down. You always want to be in this triangle position. And when you're building your centering position, build from the elbows. So put your elbow down first, then drop your hand. Elbow down first, drop your hand. You really want that to be braced. If you're having trouble with a piece of clay or your hands aren't feeling super strong, you can also brace your elbow on the inside of your thigh and actually use the strength of your thigh. And because you have bone against bone, the clay is not going to push you around and that's really the goal here is if you're moving the clay is going to move 
And if you're sitting up, you're gonna be doing some sort of bad <laughs> 90s dance. And so if you're looking down at the clay and this is happening, it's never gonna get centered. You have to be still first and then the clay will follow. So if you look down and your hands are moving, you need to find a better position, a stronger and more grounded position. So no zombie arms, T-Rex. <laughs> you want a good wheel speed pretty much all the way. And I wanna show you that engaging the right hand I was talking about. So elbow, karate chop, wrap around. And when I am pulling enough, I don't know if you can see because my muscles after quarantine aren't that developed. But all along here, um, I wanna see these muscles popping. And you'll be able to tell on yourself in real life. And that's how you know that you're not going anywhere. You can be in the perfect position but if you're not engaging your muscles, I'll show you. This will be off center. I'm in the perfect position, but I'm not engaging any muscles and I'm just riding along. That's never going to get centered. But as soon as I actually get down and brace so that I don't move and sometimes even flex my biceps and forearms, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it immediately gets centered up. So again, if it's off centered and I'm in the perfect position, but I'm not trying to be stable and still, this is what it looks like. Never gonna get there. So elbows down, flex your arms, really pull back and it's already centered. If I'm trying to center from up here, it's never gonna happen. No matter how much force, I don't know if you can see, I'm like really, really trying. It's gonna be pretty hard. It's gonna be all hands and it's gonna require me flexing my abs to keep my arms straight and that's a lot harder than just dropping my elbows down okay if you find that you get a ton of clay on your hands like a ton a ton your clay is probably too dry and it's picking up on your hands the last one was if you're using your thumb instead of this sort of if you imagine your thumb is a chicken drumstick you want the meat not the bone if you're getting these, if, if anybody's getting these like circles of clay that come off in your hand, you're probably using your thumb tip and it's gouging into the clay. All right, what else? What else is the review? Oh, soft clay. If it's not soft, make it soft. Your life will instantly become a thousand times easier and better. And release slowly. So count back from five. And like most things in clay, if you can be stable and steady and controlled and release slowly, almost nothing else matters. If that's all you take away from this, <laughs> that's a really good takeaway. So I hope some of these tips and visuals helped you sort out some of your centering problems. If not, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to respond to everyone or just email us and we can try to either do a follow-up video or give you a hand. Thanks guys.